ladies and gentlemen, let's right game into the com video. Let us discuss further the Valve VR experience and exactly what Valve are going to be doing to support virtual reality. I've also written an article for this and it's got some of the slides as well as a lot of the references that I speak about in uh, this video. Plus, in addition to all of that, I go into some extra details simply because it's easier to do so with quotes and so on in the article. So if you're really interested, you should check that out. I'd also like to point out that some of this stuff is still up in the air. Um, and over the next month, couple of months, when we get more details on the virtual reality headset, I'll be able to create even or put down even more information. But for now, uh, let's discuss a lot of what's already been uh, announced by Valve and what they've been discussing at their recent Steam Dev Days conference. Their goal is, and I quote, to provide a seamless VR experience while running Steam. And that is something that you're going to be able to understand why and how they're doing that by the end of this article, or by this video and article. So, back in January 2014, this month, in other words, Valve announced a partnership with Oculus Rift. Um, Oculus Rift is probably about the most famous of the VR headsets uh, by now anyway. Certainly there are going to be more competitors by late 2014, and certainly by the end of 2015. We'll get to that in a moment. But the real reason they've been doing this is they're trying to develop an SDK, also known to its friends and buddies, a software development kit. Now the purpose behind this is that, as Valve said, um, they are in a unique position to be uh, an intermediary between hardware and software users. In other words, they want to make it easier for games developers to take advantage of the VR hardware. Certain games now are um, VR compatible. For example, Half-Life 2. I've got uh, a screenshot in there to kind of illustrate that so you can check that out. But... Um, uh, from their own slides and you can see how all that works but basically what happens is that they want to change all of this they want to stop it from being a manual process and instead what they want to happen is they want the game to be able to ask Steam very simply uh, guys uh, you know dude is there a uh, virtual reality headset uh, plugged into this system by any chance Steam goes yep actually there is allow me to configure that for you and then the game says, oh, okay then, so you'll handle the communication, and then Valve just nods at it really badly like and gives it a good, you know, firm handshake, and the game can go on its way and play. In other words, it, the purpose is so that as soon as the game fires up, it can just load, it can handle everything, uh, Steam can handle all of this, and quite simply put, the game's developers don't need to worry so much. As you'll be able to see from the article if you choose to look at it, um, it does this by making a call via the Steamworks. Um, so it'll basically check to see if the title supports it, and then the software can communicate using Steam as the intermediary. They're going to be actually releasing this Steamworks SDK within just a few weeks, and it's going to have... Uh, that stuff and other stuff that they have talked about in here and also the stuff that they're not ready to talk about. So I guess in the next couple of weeks we're going to hear more about this. So it's great that, you know, you've got this, oh, okay, well, does it have it? Yes, it does. Okay, well, go on your way, Merry Soldier. But on the other hand, that's not really enough. Now, I'm going to use something that maybe you'll be more familiar with, and that's DirectX or OpenGL. Um, I'm not going to go into exactly how they work, but pretty much they're an abstraction layer. There are some issues uh, with OpenG uh, sorry, with DirectX regarding draw calls and other bits and bobs, but for the most part, it's very it's been very good for PC gaming. There is arguments, of course, between it and OpenGL, but that's out the scope of this video. But, now I've mentioned those, you get the basic drift. In other words, they are graphics API. So whether you've got a NVIDIA GTX uh, 780, whether you've got a Radeon 
fifty, you know, five thousand eight hundred or something like that. It doesn't matter. DirectX will handle it. So as long as your hardware and as long as the game um, doesn't request something as a minimal level. For example, let's say Verge, you have a game that requires, let's say, DirectX nine hardware as a pure minimum, and your hardware is only DirectX eight. Well you're probably SOL, you won't be able to play it. But the reality is, what happens is that DirectX handles all of the communication. So games developers don't need to work on a specific graphics card. Now why this is really important is because right now, let's say you're a, let's say that you're a hardware manufacturer, I'm a games developer, and Let's say Steam isn't involved, okay? Right, so I create my game, let's call it Killathon 3000, and you release your virtual reality set set, let's call it VR1, because we're going to be really imaginative with names. Okay, so I've done that, you've done that. I write my game specifically to take advantage of your hardware. Well, let's assume that later down the line, let's say six months, you release VR2 and you change your drivers around. Suddenly, my game, not so much with the worky with your hardware, um, you know, because I've not written it to. If I've got a team, I could maybe use that team to, let's say, support your hardware but the problem is that requires live support and that costs you, me money because i've got to say well you know what guys uh bob and tom you are no longer working on that new project you've actually got to make uh Killathon 3000 work on vr2 and the changes that you know this guy's made to his hardware in other words it's not really a great use of time for anyone so what happens of course is steam um the Steamworks VR API is going to act as an intermediary here. And so if there's a specific driver update, if there's um, changes to a piece of hardware, if there are new functions that are added in later that, uh, that I didn't code my game for, it doesn't matter. It's just going to be like DirectX. It'll just work with the specific pieces of software that you've got, the specific piece of hardware you've got, and that's all there is to it. Another bonus with this is that unlike a traditional API that say a standard headset API, this means that because Valve is doing it, it's going to act more as a almost like a virtual OS, more hardware that or more software that just one can communicate with it. This means you'll be able to do things such as running overlays. If, for example, you know you want to look at your friends lists and everything else uh, while you're gaming, it's going to be a lot easier for us, or for games developers, to do that. Valve himself have stated that VR is closer than you may think. By some point in 2015, we're certainly going to have a lot of choice. Hardware, hardware, hardware. Um, hardware to run it, both from the perspective of the GPU, the CPU, memory, that's a big issue. Um, but as well as the display hardware itself, and there are some, still some issues regarding the actual software to control all of this. John Carmack, um, formerly of course of id Software, stated numerous times that frame rate resolution are king. Stuttering and bad frame rate pretty much destroys the sense of immersion for multiple reasons. In fact, for some people, apparently, it can make you feel a little bit queasy, which isn't really ideal, particularly if you're hurtling around space at a right, reasonably good velocity. There's also issues um, regarding pixel density and resolution. To put a finer point on it, uh, Valve have said resolution is a particularly is a particular issue with VR because of the wide field of view spreads out and magnifies the pixels. The per pixel density of a 1K by 1K 110 degree display is roughly one seventh of a big screen television, and about one tenth 
that of the eye itself. In fact, it's actually lower pixel density than the original Quake running at 320 by 200. So, that sucks, right? Basically, Valve have said that they're working on 1080p displays, and they believe for right now, it's fine. It's not ideal. Um, they believe 2160p are really what they have to shoot for in the short term, which is considerably higher in terms of resolution. And in addition to all of that, they need they need to be at about 3ms or less uh, lag, because otherwise you start getting issues with the screen appearing blurry, particularly if you're turning your head side to side relatively quickly. In addition to that, you can't be doing this at 30 frames per second. This is an issue that I think is going to keep VR for a while at least away from consoles because Valve have stated that they are personally targeting 95 frames per second right now. They said the figure could go up and down but certainly no less than 60. In fact, and I quote, they've said, it's worth noting that VR quality suffers noticeably when rendering doesn't keep up with frame rates, and that is going to be a challenge to make 95 hertz st stereo rendering, especially as resolutions climb. I just want to point this out. Imagine basically running at 120 hertz at 2160p, and is going to require a lot of processing power. Obviously, we've got high performance GPUs now, but they've certainly got some ways to go. So I think it's definitely going to require a lot of grunt, a lot of computing power. So is that all? No. Um, there's a list of that, that Valve are still working on. I'm not going to read them all out to you because it's quite exhaustive, but Effectively, primarily, it's focused right now on things such as FOV, which they've said is just crap. And believe it or not, they've said that they'd love the resolution to be 100 times what they are currently running. So not 10, I didn't read that out wrong, 100 times what they're currently running. Obviously, there are massive issues with that, um, which I don't really need to... Uh, vocalized but obviously getting the bloody technology to create the tiny ass little screens that have ludicrous resolution by ludicrous resolution is going to be a problem and then there comes the little problem of actually well delivering that i mean even if we could build the screen actually creating the the actual hardware to deliver the frame rate at anything like the 95 hertz, it's yeah, it's going to take a while. Valve are extremely confident in the PC for virtual reality. I've got to admit, from the perspective of someone who hasn't really tried out virtual reality, I'm still not 100% convinced on it. I think that there are so many emerging technologies right now, it really is down to well, time to see which one works. I'm not going to even list half of them, but we know things such as Mantle, G-Sync, FreeSync, True Audio, blah, 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 all are coming out. Valve, of course, are pushing with the uh, with the Steam OS, the Steam machines, and definitely for anyone who's been around for a number of years in the PC climate, you'll know that winds are shifting. Um... And PC sales are definitely, they're diminishing in terms of the standard Office PC. But games PCs are starting to really push forward. Valve believe that uh, PC will be the first and foremost, the best development environment for for um, virtual reality. It's going to be, the and I use their quote, uh, not my own, it's going to be the epicenter. Uh, this is going to be Linux, Windows, and OS X is going to be the epicenter. It's going to be like the, the hotbed. This is due to numerous reasons. I mean, you can see it on it's for yourself, their own slide, as I said, on the article if you so wish. But there's multiple reasons behind this. Um, we've already got the Rift. 
but with a rapid evolution of hardware, it just evolved so quickly on the PC. Um, it comes out and new hardware is already being worked on. You've got the issue with consoles where you've got that long ass development cycle and it means that it's so much more difficult because you've got to work with Microsoft, you've got to work with Sony to try and, oh, okay, well, I want to put this out. Well, then you've got to go through them and pull teeth to get them to support something rather than just releasing it. It's just so much more difficult. With the PC, it's not like that. Um, you've also got more freedom because of all of that to innovate. The PC is significantly more powerful than the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. It's true. I plonked down a bunch of money on my PlayStation 4. I love the console. I love Killzone. I love other titles on it as well that I've been playing through. But the reality of the matter is my gaming PC is still significantly more powerful. It's as simple as that. Um, Killzone Shadowfall looks great and sure, Killzone, Sh Killzone Shadowfall 2 or whatever the hell ends up being, you know, the uh, title in say a couple of years' time, Infamous, Second Son, so on, it's going to look better than the first generation, but still, I've had graphics better than this, or at least up to par with this on my PC for the last couple of years. Um, so we've got hardware that's already significantly more powerful in terms of raw performance than the PS4 and this is something that Valve are trying to work on to release and reduce the overhead so in two years time when you're looking at you know the specifications of PC in two years goodness gracious what the hell the specifications are going to be of the GPU we've already got GPUs that are 5 T flops plus um, the PS4 is 1.84, so what the hell is the GPU of the you know PC going to be like then in just a couple of years' time? We could be seeing ones that are like 8, 10 T-flops. And because of the ludicrous requirements in terms of the frame rate that's required, the resolution that's required, to really enjoy these games and super-duper high quality, we're going to require this type of power. Finally, it's somewhat egotistical, perhaps sounding, but Valve have made the statement that they believe it's going to succeed because they want it to succeed. That sounds really arrogant of them, doesn't it? But it's not, it's true. They've got the time, they've got the resources, they've got the drive, they've got the industry connections to at least give it the best chance possible. I'm not saying that that means that in two years' time we're all going to be gaming with virtual reality headsets, because I don't think that's going to be the case. I, I honestly believe that there's going to be a lot of choices that we as gamers need to make of how we're going to consume our games and how we're going to think that, you know, what, do we like it? But Valve aren't giving up on this. They truly believe that this is the way forward, and... I'm not going to argue with them. If that's what they believe, then, you know, let's see what happens. But because of that, it means that there's much better chance that it's going to flourish because of those reasons. So, anyway, as I said, if you want to check the article, you can look at more sources, all the slides, and goodness knows what else, and carry on your own research. But for now, I'm going to get going. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. A little bit of food for thought, right? But I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.